thank you so much for joining today. I know you guys are probably doing so many Zoom webinars, so I appreciate you guys coming through, and I hope that we'll you know, be able to give you a lot of good information today. Um, my name is Laura Benegatti. I am the co-founder and CEO of the Art Bond Initiative Program, um, which is a program that connects students and recent graduates with companies in the creative fields for internships and also for a lot of opportunities in career development. Uh, so it's in that capacity that we've invited here um, one of our great partners, Atlantic Pictures, uh, to come in and, you know, give a little bit of an insider perspective of what they're doing and, you know, potentially give you some tips also on how to enter uh, this industry. So I am going to just mention a few things again, just because now people are still joining. couple of, um, you know, just housekeeping rules. This is a recorded session, just so that you guys know, because we're going to put it afterwards for people who didn't show up and who still will want to see this content. Um, I will ask all of you to stay muted throughout the presentation at all times. And we're going to have a QA. and a um, And I will want you guys to put everything in the chat because we're too many. It's awesome. We have a great turnout, but 38 people won't be able to ask you guys to unmute. So please go ahead and start You know, adding any questions that you have in the chat and we'll try to answer as many of them um, as possible. So without further ado, I wanna you know, introduce you guys um, to the team at Atlantic Pictures. Unfortunately, I will just kind of preface it. So we've got Lens today who's uh, amazing and who's been our main, I guess, point of contact at Atlantic Picture, who's the office manager and studio manager. Uh, Alden, who is part, who is a partner, is unfortunately sick and ill today. But we've got Nate, who thankfully joined us, uh, you know, last minute, which we really appreciate you, Nate. Nate is a seasoned producer and has been working with Atlantic for a while now, so he's going to be able to give us a lot of great insights. Uh, just to introduce briefly, Atlantic, uh, you know, Atlantic Pictures is um, creative content studio. Uh, they've done amazing projects for big, you know, studios like Netflix and HBO, and they've premiered films at like major, you know, film festivals like TIFF or Sundance. So we're so excited um, to have, you know, both Lance and Nate talk to us. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop sharing. And first of all, guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, perhaps I can start by having you both introduce yourself briefly, just so that we can know who you guys are. Lance, maybe I'll start with you. Hi guys, uh, as Laura mentioned, my name is Lance Johnson. I'm the office manager here at Atlantic Pictures. Um, I actually started off as an intern in Atlantic Pictures in 2020 um, and then slowly moved up to production associate and then I helped launch our subsidiary company Backlot as the operations manager until stepping back into the field on set because I missed it so much. <laughs> Love that but you started Amazing. Thanks, Lance. And uh, I was mentioning, I love that you started as an intern. I think it gives a lot of uh, a lot of hope for a bunch of uh, a bunch of us here. Right. So, Nate, tell us a little bit about you and your role at, at Atlantic. Hi, guys. I'm Nate. Um, I've been at Atlantic for about three years now, um, but I've been in television and film for 15. Uh, it's the only thing I've really ever done. I started as uh, a PA uh, on a street corner. Um, you know, long hours, uh, late nights, but uh, just loved it so much. Um, I transitioned here as the coordinator and actually used to run the internship program before uh, steadily climbing the ranks um, and recently got to produce uh, the latest Netflix show for Atlantic here. So it was very fun. Amazing. I love that. Guys, can you tell, and I don't know who will take this one, but, you know, we'd love to hear a bit more maybe about what what does Atlantic Pictures does? You know what what are the main services? You know the types of projects that you guys are working on. If you can give us like a brief overview of what's you know what's the day to day like in I guess in the firm and the types of projects that you guys are handling. Maybe Lance, I'll go to you. Or sorry, Nate, I saw you unmuted, so go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna see if Lance is gonna take it. Um. We are actually really um, lucky here. We have four very diversified wings, which is not very common for production companies. A lot of times you might just do development, you get some scripts and you see if you uh, make a movie. Uh, one of the companies I interned for, uh, I was there for two years and this was like 20 years ago. Um, I was there for two years and 
I think we developed a script the entire time I was there and uh, we didn't end up shooting it for like five more years. So um, at Atlantic Pictures, we have kind of smaller corporate stuff. It's very fun to film. It's usually a day or two. Um, it's working with people who aren't comfortable in front of camera because they're part of businessy type deals. Um, and then we have some larger stuff, which is kind of like the advertising stuff that might go to broadcast or a lot of times online. Um, usually get a bigger budget, maybe you have a fun story that goes along with it. Um, the most recent thing I did was film a concert uh, and a couple commercials for the VMAs. Um, so that just premiered uh, two weeks ago. So that was really fun and came with a budget and we had some fun people. Um, so there's a good and we have some large form stuff. I mentioned I got to produce uh, the show Eric, which will be on Netflix uh, next year. Um, so that's, you know, a crew of 110, you're on film sets, you're in locations, you have some money to spend, um, you have big name actors, that kind of thing. Um, and you have some fun scripts. Um, and the fourth thing we do is, as Lance mentioned, he helped launch its locations company, um, that works in television and film to rent out, uh, the, you know, vast amounts of vacant space here in New York city, especially after the pandemic, there's a lot of businesses that, shuttered and so we take that and try to rent them out to uh film productions for commercial fashion tv shows um and those can be for filming they can be office sets or they could be for you know holding um catering spaces you always need a bunch of of room and we have very little in new york city so um that company backlot tries to pair uh the vacant space with productions that need it Super cool to see that you you're really across. It seems like you know corporate vids, but also commercial advertising and like film. I mean, it's very interesting to kind of uh, hear about you know a production company that does all the mediums, right? Because quite often it's very separated. Would you would you say so? Is is it very segmented typically? Yeah, for sure. As I mentioned, uh, you know, if you go to any other company, they're just focused on one thing. You know, they might try to develop reality television, or they might be working on a feature length documentary, um, you really don't get to bounce around and go from, you know, meeting the CEO of IBM. And then the next day you're on a Netflix show and then you're with some singer who's big on TikTok uh, shooting for the VMAs. So um, it's it's a fun, when you get to do that all in a month, uh, which I got to last month, uh, it's very fun. That's epic. I love that. Lance, tell us a bit more about like, you know, and thanks, Nate, I'll, I'll come back to you if you see like, Lance, tell us a bit about, you know, what what is your what is your role right like a lot of a lot of people are thinking like studio manager office manager like it's kind of that key position but we don't really understand like what it means on the day to day like tell us a little bit about that yeah so uh, a lot of the day to day obviously on managing the uh, internship program but it's uh ensuring that we're supplied for productions coming in to ensuring that the phones are operational, uh, making sure that people have notepads and are ready to go, uh, taking notes during company meetings, um, ensuring that schedules are locked in for different programs that we have coming in, making sure that the office is uh, essentially running as a whole um, and making sure that the systems don't falter and fail because um, it could very helpful. To have. <laughs> yeah, very helpful to have. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of the things that I do on the side as well too is like I review a lot of our contracts coming in and building templates for that so that we can push that stuff out and keep that in rotation for productions um, assisting producers where um, files are kept uh, in case they get lost they have a lot on their plate so it's nice to have somebody that can centralize that information and then as well as keeping track of the project list that we have we have multiple different, as Nate was saying, right. projects running through our office and making sure that we know where that project is throughout its phase from start all the way to invoicing. Amazing. And how did you start, Lance? Like you mentioned, you started as an intern. Uh, you know, what, what did you, if I can ask you a little bit, and obviously, Nate, I'll ask you the same question. Uh, you know, what did you study? Did you study something relating to that? Um, you know, how did you get this internship? Like, how long did it get you to get hired and, you know, Tell us a little bit, if you can be brief about it, but we want to know. Yeah, so I actually went to uh, film school in Florida at Full Sail University. Um, and then I left there in 2019 and moved to New Jersey and sent my resume everywhere. 
Um, and luckily I was picked up at Atlantic Pictures uh, for an internship um, in the city. It was unpaid. I was think I was in like two, three days a week. Um, and then I slowly, I think two months in, I started actually getting paid work from that uh, because I raised my hand and said, I know g and &E. The producer was like, I need somebody quick. I'm like, yeah, I can do that. Um, and then I was thrown in the mix. And then next thing I knew, I was driving vehicles around because I knew how to drive steak trucks through New York City, which is a uh, wheelhouse all of it, it's all in its own. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's how I started. Honestly, it was just by raising my hand. I love that. So it was just really putting yourself out there, right? That's uh, that's always the hardest thing, but but the key. What about what about you, Nate? Like, I know it's been a little bit more years that you've been in the field, but like, if you can, uh, you know, condense that for us and and let us know how how this journey went for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, as I mentioned, a long suffering PA. Um, I was on set, which I really loved, but wanted to try something new, kind of move towards producing, which I get to do now. Um. So I did a bunch of things. I went from set, bounced to the office, realized that wasn't right for me, uh, worked in commercials for a little bit, back to union film sets on TV, um, really found a niche with uh, helping direct background and that kind of stuff and worked my way to the DGA before realizing that that wasn't the ultimate path for me. And then I was able to bounce. And um, one of the things that I was worried about is did I just waste uh, a decade of my life uh, standing in the rain on film sets? But every tool that I picked up there in the office as well. A lot of the paperwork and fixing of copiers and that kind of stuff really transitioned. There are tools in my tool belt um, that I got to bring to Atlantic. And that's why when I had the opportunity, I went from coordinator up to, you know, one of the top producers here pretty quickly, just um, based on the stuff that I was able to, you know, to pick up and learn every single day along the way. I love that. Tell us a bit more about like, what does a producer does on the day to day? Because I'll I'll tell you a quick story. Is I started my my career in theater, and I I was a theater producer. And like when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, it's gonna be so glamorous, you know? I'm gonna be like casting people, and I'll be on stage working with the actors. And like turns out, I was just doing budgets and like raising money, right? So that was like <laughs> the difference between the expectations and the reality. What what do you do as a producer, like on the day to day? What what should people expect if they're gonna look at those types of careers? I mostly just uh, eat crafty and point at stuff. Um, no, uh, I got into television filmmaking to actually produce and be on a set and do that kind of stuff. And uh, I went to school for it um, in journalism and television and film uh, so that I wouldn't have to do spreadsheets all day. Uh, and then I got here and I'm doing a lot of spreadsheets. So it's scheduling. A lot of it is scheduling um, and working within a budget. Uh, and another way I leapfrogged uh, at this company is just by willing to put in the hours to learn a couple budgeting softwares that they had and they were trying out um, and digging through old files, having people send me, hey, do you have a, a budget that's kind of like this? I want to learn what it's going to take and then reaching out to different companies and getting a handle on what stuff costs and little tips and tricks to, uh, to stay under budget. Um, and a lot of that is a lot of pre-planning. So it's a lot of leg hours, man hours to come up with a really good schedule, uh, to find ways to save money and time um, and just creative tricks like that. Um, and scheduling coming from that, that DGA AD background is, is one of my strong suits. So, you know, leaning into the strong suits, um, you know, budgets and equipment, not so much, but you just take the time and learn that kind of stuff. And forgive my, my ignorance, DGA, what does it mean? I'm so sorry. I guess I shouldn't know that. That is all right. Uh, the DGA is the Directors Guild of America. Okay, um, sorry. If you Thank are you. no, that's all right. If you are a PA, that's that's one of the main goals. Unless you can find a different department, which is a great thing to do. Start as a PA. Um, I, th I think some of the questions are how do we get a foot in the door um, that I see coming in, um, yeah. and a big part of that is maybe starting as a PA, but knowing an ultimate goal and kind of how to pivot. I have a whole bunch of friends who we're pretty bad at being PAs because they just walk over and talk to the locations department or hang out with the props department all the time and just get, uh, you know, tricks. And they say, Hey, how do I, you know, better do this? And are there classes and what do I do? And so they just hanging by the camera department, um, learning that there is a seminar and you can get in local 600, which is the camera union. Um, so, you know, getting a foot in the door as a PA is great. Yeah. Um, if you have an exit strategy, uh, for sure. <laughs> because PAing is going to be like, eventually you got to get out of there, right? It's uh... Yeah, no, if you're really good at what you do, they want you to do that for, you know, 10 years. Uh, 
which is all right, you know, because you do pick up stuff along the way. And uh, as long as you keep an open mind and you're having fun um, and you're learning stuff, that's the right. biggest thing. That that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. Thanks, Nate. That that gives us some good insight. I'd love to hear a bit more and I'm seeing some great questions. So I'm excited. We'll, we'll get to you guys. Thank you. Please keep them coming. And uh, in about 10 minutes or so, we'll, uh, I'll go ahead and shoot those uh, questions to, to Nate and Lance. Maybe Lance, you know, you, you've started as an intern, right? And now you've been, you've been with Atlantic. Uh, what's the culture like? You know, I think that's the kind of million dollar question everybody always asks about that. But, you know, what, what are you, what, get, what makes you guys unique? Like, is there something specific, like in terms of the team dynamic? We'd love to hear it. Um, so I don't want to say because it feels vague, like, like a family, but like it sometimes it does, but it's also like the professional environment, obviously, but it's, it's very, we start off in a very small office. So it was very like a, like a small community and it's branched out into this larger community. We have no bullpens. All of our offices have glass doors. So it's looking out into the area and we come are constantly talking to each other whether we're in person or remote, we're constantly in communication with each other. Right. And that's the lovely thing about film is you can take all these different people's insights and utilize their skills to pull into your project. And it's just, it's nice to have that, that workaround to know that where I'm lacking, somebody else is going to go ahead and push forward and fill that gap. Um, so I, I, like I said, I don't want to say family, but it feels like that type of mentality. Yeah, like close knit and like everybody's kind of like really jumping in and and kind of weighing in in a different types of pro different. I mean, nobody's kind of like staying in their lane only and just kind of going, but everybody's collaborating a bit more. Would you say? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a huge collaboration environment, um, which is fantastic to have without the collaboration a lot of projects would be done before. how do you guys uh you know i think that's a little bit of an inside question but i think it's cool for people to know what they should start looking into what, what what's the mean of communication that you guys use like is it slack is it teams like how do you guys uh how do you guys get to talk all the time we prefer in person uh just because it's nice to talk to people in face but when we are yeah. not we use zoom as we're using right now we use yeah. slack a lot yeah. of times we'll be calling each other on, on each other's phones, texting each other just to stay in the loop. Uh, yeah. Sometimes Slack doesn't, doesn't ping us, so it's nice to just call each other. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, we, we're, we're, we'll constantly talk to each other. We'll call each other if we have any questions, and we're all quick to pick up the phone. Love that. And so I guess I think a lot of the questions are going to be about that, and I'm seeing already some really good questions with some specific that I would not even be able to answer, so I'm really glad you guys are here. Um, but before we get to that, I think a couple of things that people might be interested in, in hearing about is, and maybe I'll, I'll come to you, Nate, you know, wh what do you think? And obviously I know you ran the internship program back in the days, right? Now Lance is doing that, but what are the key attributes that you value, you know, in, in your interns and not just in your interns, but also in your junior roles, you know, in your PAs or like people that are starting, like, what are you, what are you looking for? And, and I, and I, I think I'd love to hear your answer also from like soft skill, but also hard skills. Maybe there are some stuff that you want them to have. Right. So we'd love to hear your, your, your thoughts on that. For sure. Yeah. And you know, there's a whole bunch of junior people here. And as I go, I, I like to bring the people uh, who have these attributes along with me. Um, the best ability is availability. So if you are there, you're 15 minutes early with a smile and a pen, um, that's step one. And then just being able to step up, even if you're not the most confident person, just saying, sure. And asking the right questions. I here's, you know, as long as you have educated questions, I can always walk you through that. So you you say, absolutely. I'll, I'll do whatever you need. Um, and then you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, you can ask the educated questions. Um, another great thing along with that is using your resources. So if it's day one on a set and you have a call sheet, um, that's going to answer a lot of your questions. If they're saying, Hey, find this person or go do this thing. Um, instead of having to ask a million questions, you go, okay, I have to find this truck or this person, or I have to go to this street corner and you're using your map that's attached to the call sheet, or you're using, you know, uh, directions on your phone and you can always, um, you know, use your resources. Uh, here we have a pretty robust Dropbox at Atlantic pictures. 
which not only is going to have all the project files and running is very up to date that everyone has access to, um, but also it has some stuff from the past. So if you need templates or guides or uh, something to compare to, um, that's going to be full uh, of stuff and resources. So definitely just dive in at first and, you know, use your resources and always be reading or, you know, uh, learning if you can. I love that. So it's kind of a good, I think that's, that's a common theme, right? For a lot of our participants as well in the program is like when to, you know, I, I like the yes attitude, right? Coming at it with being like, yeah, I'm going to tackle it, you know, because I think there's no small tasks specifically in the beginning. Right. Uh, but how to ask the right questions and when, and also how to like utilize what's already there. Right. And you mentioned that, like, you know, utilizing a call sheet to find most of the information. I think it's quite interesting to hear that. Right. Because there's a balance. Sometimes there's too many questions and sometimes like you should be asking questions. Right. Because otherwise you might go in the wrong direction and it would have been better to clarify from the gets, I imagine. Yeah. My first job actually in New York, I got a phone call. I, you know, through as many lines out of communication to people uh, who, who think I'm smart. And I said, hey, hook me up if you ever have a job. And somebody called someone in LA who called someone in New York who finally got me a PA gig. And I got a call at like 10 o'clock at night. Like, can you go uh, gaff this van? It's at nine in the morning. Here's like nine other information. Here's all the people you're going to need on. So I'm just furiously taking notes. Um, and I just come back from uh, producing commercials in South Africa. So it's my first time in New York and there's like a bunch of terminology and I went uh hey you said gaff the van is that like a gaffer is like someone that lights what is that and they said no 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 sorry that just means load the van and everything else I had written down and I googled and asked my buddies who were already PAs um but yeah that that one caught me off guard I said absolutely I can absolutely do that I'll be there 30 minutes early uh I can do whatever you need I just don't know what that means um <laughs> it's very simple and they said that's that's completely fine you shouldn't know what gaffing means it just means uh, make sure all the people who are supposed to be in the van are in the van. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, we have a lot of questions here, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot them. Like, Lens, maybe I'll start I'll start with you. Uh, we have a question here uh, that asks about, like, what are the opportunities that are possible to achieve for new talent in the companies? For example, writers, editors, designers, etc. cetera. Um, as per Atlantic Pictures? Yeah. Um, for a lot of new people that are coming in, we we constantly are free. So we constantly pull in freelancers. So we have a lot of individuals that email our direct line uh, info at Atlantic Pictures and send over their resume. And we send that out to the producers for consideration for projects that will go ahead and fit their specific skills. So with that, uh, keep that email in mind. If you do are interested in a specific job, go ahead and send that over. We'll review and send it over. With that, we have, we have that. Um, we also have a lot of our interns in the past um, have moved up the ranks like Nate has, uh, like I have, and we have other employees, uh, Emily, uh, who is an associate producer now. She started off as an intern. Um, we have another employee, Jerry. He, I believe he interned and then he was, uh, an executive assistant, and now he's an associate producer. So there's plenty of opportunities to go ahead and move up in this in this company and this industry by just knowing those things and placing your your ducks in a row, essentially, uh, and knowing where you want to land. Um, and if you don't know where you want to land, that's perfectly okay. Uh, I started off wanting to be a DP, and now I love paperwork. So. <laughs> I love that everybody started something and then suddenly turned out to be something else. So I think, you know, Elijah, that was Elijah asking this question. I hope this 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 answers it. You know, I think, you know, if if you do want to be seeking opportunities there, being clear about, you know, sending out your resume, what type of opportunities you would be available for, uh, you know, as a freelancer potentially, and that will help, you know, Lance and the team redirect, right, your your resume to potential uh, opportunities if they open up. So I have a question from uh, Trevin now. So he's asking, hey, Nate and Lance, can you talk a bit more about the advertising side of Atlantic Pictures? So maybe, Nate, if you can take that one, uh, we'd love to hear a little bit more. Sure. Um, so this company was founded in the early 2000s and kind of focused on indie film. And then uh, with some relationships and people coming uh, for smaller projects, they pivoted into a more corporate side. And the mix of you know being able to put 
big cinematic projects uh, up for full seasons of shows or movies. Um, and then kind of the corporate stuff led to uh, a niche in advertising. Um, and so it's not the most of what we do, but, um, you know, a lot of times agencies come, a lot of them from Los Angeles. That's where a lot of advertising is done. Um, and they might come to New York because they need something very New York. Um, and we are a company that's kind of carved out uh, that role. So we do, you know, big, small, um, and, and it's just about fostering relationships. So the VMAs, which we started making commercials for M&Ms, um, that came from, you know, they had met somebody uh, in the early 2000s, the head of our company, Darren, and then uh, happened to run into them again this year. And and they saw kind of our updated work. Um, so there's, there's a variety of random relationships that get us more work. And, you know, people see the work on our website and, uh, you know, and love what we do. I love that. It's uh, always all about relationships, always, <laughs> even even the even the jobs, you know, that you're getting. So uh, thanks for that. Eric Sue is asking. And by the way, I'm sorry if I'm butchering any names. Please forgive my French accent. Uh, Eric Sue is asking, you know, if you have any opportunities in music, like songwriting, music production, or is that really not something that you guys are doing? That's not something we typically do. Um, and this kind of goes back to, you know, what opportunities are out there. Uh, everyone in television and film is freelance. Uh, I'm technically a salaried employee, but I, you know, I have all my stuff in, in a banker's box in case I have to go to another project or they need to move on for me. It's everyone's kind of individual. Um, that being said, if you are looking for editing work, a great way is by doing the editing internship at Atlantic Pictures. We also do that. And we'd also do VFX here if you're interested in that. Um, for music and songwriting, um, there are some post houses and some audio houses that um, specialize in that kind of stuff. They do a lot of post mixing and work, and maybe that's a way in. You can intern, you can work the front desk at somewhere that does the post audio. And then from there, some of the composers and people might, you know, stop in and you can, when there's a good opportunity, not right in the middle of their work, but when there's a good break, um, maybe at lunchtime, kind of pick their brain. Um, and that's a great way to just foster relationships and meet people. You know, if Hans Zimmer is coming in the door to, uh, you know, put some tracks down or listen to the latest mix and you're working the front desk, um, that's a good way to do it. That's right. I love that. Thanks for uh, thanks for the advice, Nate. And actually, I hope that this helps you in in, in some ways. Um, I, I hope I will get to all questions, guys, but I don't think I will. But I'm going to try to you know, find find some of them that are the most potentially common for, for people to want to hear. So I have a question here from Emma that's asking a little bit about, you know, what maybe Lance, you know, coming to you as well, like what would be like a challenge, you know, that you face in the production industry and, and what did this challenge teach you? And maybe Nate, if you have also an answer for that one too. It's a very good question. That's a very good question. And I, I'm running through a number of times where I was stressed and running through the city. Um, uh, honestly, the biggest challenge I've ever faced while on sets is the longest long hours uh, and being present within those hours. Because um, a lot of the times, sometimes you'll be on for eight hours a day and then other times you'll be on for 14 hour days. Right. And it's just balancing those, those times. Uh, not only for uh, work, but social life. That's okay. Film will become your social life. Um, but no, really, it's just bal balancing your time uh, and being present in the moment is the hardest challenge, uh, especially for projects that go weeks on end and you're pulling 12-hour days. Uh, it's it, it's tough, but like very rewarding at the same time. It's it's the reality. I like I like that you're saying it. You're saying it how it is, Nate. What's your what's your take on that one? Yeah, twelve hour days would be nice. Um, <laughs> oh my god! I, did I did I mention that I yeah stood in the rain for ten years as a PA? So I, I used to work on Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which when you do background ran about twenty hours a day. Wow! Um, so you're doing hundred hour weeks. Um, and you know sometimes they try to foster your break at at the end of it. They would try to do shifts. Um, because you became uh you know a little bit less human by the end of it with no sleep. Um, so we were there, you know, 3 a.m. getting everyone in those 1950s hairdos and garb. And, you know, that does become your life. And one of the greatest thing that kind of ties into some of the other questions um, is if you want to write and direct your own stuff, 
that becomes very difficult when you're trying to make rent in New York by getting up at 3 a.m. to work on Marvelous Mrs. Basil. Um, you know, the OT checks are nice, but, you know, you do that for 10 months, maybe 11 months a year. Um, and then you just kind of go on vacation and you're on to the next season. So um, there's a really good balance of people that, you know, work maybe restaurant jobs and then they write and, and direct specifically uh, on their own time. And uh, whereas you get a really great handle uh, on some of the knowledge by being on a set like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, um, you don't have any of the time to kind of do your own stuff. So that's always a balance. And we've had people, you know, make as much money as they can in six months and then kind of leave the job um, to kind of, you know, produce their own stuff, um, right. which is also commendable. That's that's one way to do it. Well, that was a question. Actually, yeah, Antonio is asking a question saying like, direct, directed to you, Nate, saying like, do you have any advice on learning to produce without it being your full-time job yet? That's fair. Um, I was, yeah, when I was in college, uh, I quickly realized that it was like the kid that stayed up till 2 a.m. the night before made a beautiful, beautiful short film. And mine was just kind of blase and it was great. It was, you know, it had a wide shot and then it had coverage and uh, it was edited seamlessly, but I it just was uh, underwhelming creatively. And I said, but I'm very good at, you know, organizing and I'm under budget. And they said, yeah, that's not, that's not directing or writing, that's producing. Um, so I kind of knew early that that was a uh, direction. Um, and then, you know, it, it took a lot of different channels to figure out how to get there. Um, and I would say the greatest thing about producing is you have to go produce something. You have to go make something. Um, so, you know, if it's not your full-time job, it's, it's learning how to organize. It's learning to, find the people that are creative uh, and have a great eye for stuff and kind of pulling it all together. Um, and there's a lot of great opportunities for student films or little indie films. Um, and if you can bring, you know, organization and maybe a couple hundred dollars to it, uh, you can kind of start there. And uh, after a few times of, of learning all the pitfalls, uh, you know, you can call yourself a producer. You can, you can do some indie stuff. I love that. We have so many great questions, guys. It's uh, it's crazy. I'll take two more uh, for now. And then afterwards, I'll see if there's a way for us to compile some stuff to you. And maybe I'll send everybody afterwards via email some some further info. But I think there's two that are pretty cool. Uh, I guess maybe to you, Lance, like what's the coolest opportunity you've been involved in? Like what's what's make it worth for you? I, I, we're talking about those 12 hours and 20 hour days. Like what has been your coolest project on your end? And then Nate, I'll ask you the same, uh, of course. The one that sticks out is the most memorable, and I think it's because I got pulled from being a PA to do pulling AC work, was uh, we do a lot of work with BBC, uh, specifically their Maestros program, and was meeting Mark Ronson. That uh, was the first time I actually fangirled out a little bit, but like had to keep it cool. Um, I constantly told my wife, I'm like, guess who I'm working with? She's like, Mark Ronson? I'm like, Mark Ronson. Um, but that one was really fun, uh, not only because I got got to meet him but i was pulled from a pa and i started doing uh pulling focus uh, and actually working on camera which is something that like i had been wanting to do for a long time and i got the exposure to it um and i found out if that's really what i wanted to do um but that was a really really fun project long hours not the 20 hours like nate said uh i was being modest in my answer more it was 16 16 that was rough it was 12 um, hour, i was doing that shoot too it's like 14 hours it's fine yeah it's 14 hour days it wasn't bad uh yeah. yeah uh we got really good at jenga uh loading cars uh, it, was, it was a good time that was a that was a very fun shoot uh on a low on a pretty standard low budget uh i could say conservative budget i'll say that um to where i had a lot of opportunities Amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit jealous, low key. But Nate, how about you? What, what was like the coolest project you've had? That Mark Ronson project was pretty cool. Um, but like I said, my, my summer was, you know, finishing uh, a Netflix project. Um, pretty substantial. It's very fun. It was set in the early '80s, so it's a lot of costumes. It's, uh, you know, there's, there's some fun quirky things about it and it was set in the 80s so we got to make 1980s new york um mm -hmm. and then unfortunately we had the strike 
Um, so I kind of had a transition. Uh, unfortunately, we're coming through it. It's going to be the end of it. And uh, by the time you guys get in the industry, we won't have any more strikes. Um, but I went from that and I said, oh boy, I better go into the office to figure out if I still have a job. Um, and then right away, I got to do some large kind of budget uh, drone shoots, that kind of stuff. So we we have a lot of drone and second unit stuff um, that I get to direct because I talk to some director of the main movie and they say, hey, go make this. You know, you're going to have one actor, um, you know, and and a space and or you're just filming the sky. Um, but, uh, but I get to direct those small, tiny, tiny units. Um, and then from there doing that second unit stuff right into, you know, the VMAs, which was very fun as well. I love that. So that was, yeah. that was a good couple months there. Your lives are very, uh, very glamorous, difficult, but glamorous in, in, in both ways, yeah. right? You've got the glamour and the non-glamorous. So I'll ask one last question. Maybe Lance, if you don't mind, I'll ask it for, for Nate, because I think he's been, uh, he's got more years on you. I, I'm, uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, sorry, Nate, uh, but Somebody's asking, somebody's asking, Stevie's asking if you could do it all over again from the very beginning of I want to do something in the film industry, what would you do differently? I think that's a great, uh, great ending question for this first portion of the of the session. And then afterwards, I'll, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll see if I can compile some of those questions for you to answer that I'll send to you all by email. Great. Uh, what would I do differently? Not a thing. No, um, I wouldn't get up at 3 a.m. to work on, uh, you know. Uh, styling people's hair. Um, but in all seriousness, I enjoyed the path. Um, one of the things that I regret and I tell everyone who is young and getting into it is um, definitely let people know what you want to do. Uh, I was uh, smart and hardworking and put my head down and did all the things that made a great PA. But then eventually, you know, it it took me years and years to just kind of and talked to somebody who I had been uh, on a show with for like six months. And they were like, oh, you're interested in producing like commercials? You should have told me that earlier. Like I have this opportunity. So, um, you know, don't interrupt a DP in the middle of a shop. But if you're working on a show or a small movie, um, get to know everyone. Get to know everyone by their first name and let people know what you're interested in. Say, hey, I'm a great PA, but also, you know, I compose music and I have no idea how to get into uh, that world. And a lot of times, you know, the gaffer who's lighting might say, oh yeah, my, you know, sister-in-law runs a uh, post audio and music house. And so just foster and everyone, because we're in this long struggling world and we're with each other for 14 to 20 hours a day, um, they want to help you. Uh, and they might seem gruff and grumbling because they've been up for 80 hours, but, um, everybody wants to help you if you are smart, conscientious and kind of talk to them at the right time you know when there's a break or there's a meal uh you can always pick someone's brain and let them know what you're interested in especially those you know you admire or you want to you know you look up to you say that person's pretty smart and i like what they're doing i want to let them know that i want to get into post see if they have any ideas so um definitely once again 15 minutes early pen and a smile uh be eager always say, yes, I can, I'll figure it out. And then, um, you know, in the downtime, because we do have some of that in film, uh, just let people know what you're good at and what you enjoy. I love that. Be vocal and be willing and be vocal in the right times. Uh, Nate, Lance, you guys have been amazing. What I'm going to do and I'm going to ask everybody to do, if you don't mind, is DM me your email address, uh, private message, please. Um, so that what I'm, what I'll do is that I'll get some questions for you if you don't mind. Just like I, I think we missed a, a few, and I'll send the, the answers to to everybody alongside with maybe an email address for Atlantic, um, in case we've got freelancers and uh, and you know potential interns wanting here. So really appreciate your time, guys, and I think uh, you know we'll uh, we'll let you go, and I'll move forward with you know the presentation of like you know the program and and kind of explaining a little bit about you know, what our program does and how do we, how do we get participants to get internship with you guys uh, and get good opportunities to enter the industry. So thank you guys so, so much for coming through. And uh, if you want to stick around, please feel free. But otherwise, I know you guys are busy and I'll collect email addresses. So I'll get the information to you. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Lance. Of course. Thanks, Lara. Bye, guys. I'll continue on or stay on if you want, and I'll I'll explain a little bit more about what, what our van does. So 
guys, thank you so much for like, you know, joining, you know, this, uh, joining this session. I think it's really important for us to kind of like hear a bit more about how to access those, you know, opportunities in the industry, right? So I just want to explain briefly what, what our program does. It'll be like, you know, five, 10 minutes. And then afterwards, if you guys have further questions also about what Lance and Nate mentioned or things about Atlantic, I can answer because I know them quite well. Um, so first thing, Artbound Initiative, uh, basically our mission is that we help students and fresh grads um, break into the creative industries. Those industries are very much about who you know. Have you seen, as you've seen, it's a lot about relationships and that's also how you move up in the industry. So that's our goal is to kind of offer that stepping stone um, for students. So what our program includes is that there's kind of four main aspects. The first one is like, we do a lot of coaching around professional development, like how to launch your career, how to get into the field. We have also a guaranteed internship placement, you know, so that you're able to kind of apply everything that you're learning into the industry. There's personalized support throughout the whole time. You know, you'll have a dedicated coordinator. We'll talk about also support if you're going overseas because we have different destinations for our programs. And then we also have our network. We have about 700 people in our alumni network. We're selective um, and small, but the cool thing about it is that then you get to connect with a lot of people because it's smaller. Um, so people are more inclined to answer. Uh, we have different destinations for our program. We offer programs in New York City, uh, obviously with people and companies like Atlantic. Um, we've got also opportunities in Chicago that we've just launched. Uh, we've got opportunities in LA as well. Uh, and then overseas for those who are in the US, but we also have some people from Australia. We've got programs in Berlin, Germany, Melbourne, Sydney, and we've got also remote programs, okay? So if you don't, you know, you might not have the financial means to relocate somewhere, but you still want to get a really cool internship with a company in a big city or overseas, you can do that. So those are the five kind of big industries that we work with on our end, advertising, communications, marketing. We've got stuff in entertainment and media, things in fine arts, visual art world, lots of stuff in design, and then some opportunities as well in the fashion industry. Um, I'm adding here a super long list of internship types. I would recommend for you guys to check it on our website. Um, I'll share the link afterwards. So you can see here a bunch of internships, like whether it's going to be <clears throat> talent management, production, graphic design, motion, music business, like you know, cultural management, comm, PR, marketing, social media, all those areas. Um, in terms of the coaching that we do, basically, it's all online and it's about two to three months. You do a little bit of coaching before you start your internship and it's all pragmatic stuff. Okay. It's all about like rebuilding your resume from scratch with a resume writer. If you have, if you're creative and you have a portfolio, it's going to be being paired with an industry professional in your field to redo your portfolio or being paired with somebody in your field to like talk about careers. Um, it's going to be about, you know, interviewing and prep preparing for interviews that's very difficult so we have senior recruiters that we work with they're going to do mock interviews with you and then we help you a lot around like mindset for the workforce learning how to build your brand learning how to deal with difficult managers that's going to happen um, learning how to handle 14 hour days sometimes like how to really make sure that you still you know build the right mindset for it too and then also zooming out a bit about your career plan right like thinking about okay now you're studying or you're a fresh grad, what do you want to be in 10 years and how do we help you plan from there, right? There's a lot of ways to get there, but we'll give you some tools. Those are also some of the coaches that we work with, some people at Warner Bros, Advice, um, you know, Guggenheim, um, Anomaly, McCann, those are big ad agencies. The placement, so you have a guaranteed internship placement if you do our program. Um, at the end, of course, of like doing that kind of little coaching that we're going to organize for the first few months, uh, the internship is ranging from three to six months. That's basically based on your availability. You can also do it for credit if your school allows it. And if you have internship classes, you can do that for credit. The only thing that I want to be you know, clear about and we're clear with everybody is that unfortunately, as much as I wish we could, we can't guarantee paid opportunities only. Like that's something we work with a lot of different employers. Some of them pay, some of them don't pay because they're boutique firms or like more, you know, solo or, you know, artists. So that's the only thing about the program. The, the downside, I guess, is that, you know, if you're going to undertake the program and if you're going get, to get selected, um, you'll have to know that you need to be prepared um, that it might not be a paid internship. So if that's a deal breaker for you, totally understand and, you know, would be careful of like moving forward if that's the case. Um, 
some of our company partners, as you can see, some of the big names, right? High Beast, like we've worked with Vice. We had people at CBS, at Pace. Um, but we also have a lot of cool boutique firms that are doing big projects. Atlantic Pictures is one of them. They're a boutique firm. They're not, they don't have a huge amount of staff, but they're doing like big projects. And we love those types of companies because typically they hire more, um, which is great. So quickly, if you're going overseas, um, if you're going to Berlin or, you know, if you're in the U.S. and you're going overseas, we're going to handle everything from visa to finding insurance to finding housing for you to basically like, you know, meeting you upon arrival. So we have this entire kind of support system if you want to do an internship abroad, because it's not easy <laughs> to relocate. Uh, it, takes, uh, it takes some logistics involved. So we're handling that with you. And then the last part of it, I guess two, two short last part is continued support. So you're getting two dedicated program coordinators throughout, the, throughout your program. You're getting a virtual coordinator that's going to be there from start to finish. They're going to help you with any questions you have along the way anything regarding the coaching to the internship. And then you'll also have your in-city coordinator. Let's say you're doing something in New York. You'll be able to meet our New York coordinator, Sasha. She's amazing. She's actually working for a huge uh, recruiting agency, which is good for you. Good connection. So they're going to be the person like really there in case you need them and helping you like, you know, just for anything and also being there for, for in-person meetups. And then the final aspect is the community that we have. So, you know, we are pretty big, as I mentioned, on the alumni. We have our own app. Everybody's chatting there. Everybody's like, you know, seeing the webinars that we're organizing. We have monthly events in each of the locations that we offer as well. And then we're also sharing all the time jobs and like career resources, you know, because the goal obviously is to help everybody step up. So the tuition of the program is based on a course credit in the U.S., uh, so for our local and virtual program, it's 2,250, which includes everything that I just mentioned. I'll, I'll show you the breakdown afterwards. If you want to go overseas, it's going to be more expensive because, you know, there's a lot of work for the for the travel support, right? The, the relocation. So if you can see here, most of it is going towards the curriculum that we offer. 30% uh, of it is going if you're going overseas towards the travel support, like all the visa. It's a lot of admin for us to handle. And then also, of course, for the event and all the platforms that we have. So for the tuition, we have scholarships that are available that I highly recommend for you guys to apply. There's a lot of grants also available from your universities. Never under, never like overlook that. There's a lot of money there also that you can potentially tap into. And then you can also, you know, we have installment plans as well so that you can break it in, in several kind of smaller pieces. So I won't go into that, but I highly recommend for you guys to check out, you know, to check our, our Instagram page. We have a lot of like, real stories right because right now i'm telling you about the program but i think it would be cool for you to see what what people did and what their internship like was about so we have that on our ig uh, i'll add the link and if you guys want to basically um, scan this qr code you can access basically a, a link for a form that's going to check your eligibility because not everybody's going to be eligible so you're going to want to put your majors uh, where you want to go and like what's your student status and based on that our team is going to email you back to tell you like whether you are eligible or not uh, to the program and if you are eligible next step will be to either like chat with us chat with a you know an advisor to kind of talk more about what type of internships are right for you um, I highly recommend that honestly because you really want to talk to them and understand what's good you know, based on what you want to do, like we can advise the type of companies, the types of internships. So it's also a free career coaching session that you're getting. So definitely get on a call with us. Um, and then you can look at our application requirements. We have uh, an application form where you have to, you know, add some information about you. And then we'll, you know, let you know if you've been selected into the program. So I'm sorry that I bombarded you with information, but I wanted to kind of keep some time in case you guys had any questions. Uh, I know that you have, um, you know, some, thank you for sharing, by the way, all your emails. That's really awesome. Um, I will send you guys afterwards, um, as I mentioned, more information. I'll send you the recording of that and I'll see if I can get an email address from Atlantic to see if you can like, you know, contact them. Um, I see here Trevin also is, is asking, is there an application to fill out to join? Yes. So there's an application form for us here. I'll just put it here. You have our website there, okay? And then if you go on our page, you will be able to apply. If you guys have any questions about the program, we've got about five five to 10 minutes more. So I'm happy to address them. So if you wanna pop them into the chat, I'm also seeing a lot of people saying, uh, asking questions here, which is awesome. 
Perfect. And I'm seeing emails. So pop any questions that you might have in the chat, whether about Atlantic or about ABI, uh, which is Art Bond Initiative in short, I'm happy to, to answer them. Oh, Faye is asking, is the program also for recent graduates? Yes, it is. Um, it is also for recent grads. So we accept students. Typically, we don't accept freshmen, I will say, like second year onward. Uh, and then master students also, and then fresh graduates as well. So no problem. So glad to see all. I'm sorry, I'm getting a lot of really super, super nice messages. Um, so, okay, Norma is asking, are acceptances decided by a specific date or is it a rolling admission? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. We have a summer deadline. So first of all, right now, we are taking applications for spring, okay? You are you just began the fall semester. We're taking applications for spring internship currently, okay? So, so internship starting in January. Um, our summer application, our summer is like the most popular time for our program and is the most, um, I guess, competitive, right? Because everybody's applying. So ideally apply. Typically, we have two big deadlines. We have one in, end, in the end of the fall semester. So like late November, mid-December, that's for our overseas program. So if you want to go internationally, that's when you should apply. And then we have another deadline that's in the early spring semester for um, our local. So let's say you're in the US and you want to do New York. Um, so I would recommend to apply early. We're taking early applications by November 15. So before you start your finals, if for, for some of you guys who are studying. So November 15 will be our early application for summer. If you guys are interested, I recommend to apply then because we are a rolling admission process. So it means that we're going to keep enrolling people, of course, if they're qualified for us and we think they could be a good fit until we have no more space. And because we're a small program, like we, you know, uh, we typically accept like about 100 people for summer max. Um, so Tess is asking, can you not participate overseas if you're over 30 years old? That's a great question. So typically, yes, a lot of the countries um, have some visa, at least for the visa requirements that, that we have and the visa that we work with. Typically, a lot of them are below 30. So what I can ask you, Tess, is maybe can you email us? I'll put here uh, our email address. Can you email us with more info so that we can tell you about your situation as well. So I'm putting here info at Artbound Initiative. That way you can kind of tell us more about the situation and we can advise. Um, Antonio is asking, is there a cutoff for recent grads? No, not specifically. Um, I think typically most people that do our program, they've they graduated like maybe two years ago, max, two, three years ago, max. I think after that, maybe we have less people that apply. So Antonio, I don't know if that answers it. Um, Tess is asking, do you have uh, to have a lot of experience or training, of course not. Um, you know, this is a program to get you a stepping stone, right? To kind of get like that foot in the door. So you don't need to have a lot of experience to enter the program. What we're looking for is your drive, like your personality. Um, you know, do you want it? Like how, you know, what are you aiming for? Like, it's more about personality for us. We don't care about the grades. We don't care about, you know, maybe you've worked in hospitality, in restaurants, and you killed it. And those are great skills for us as well, because you know that might work really well for an internship in production, for example, or an internship in like advertising, which is really those types of you know personalities of good communicators. So you don't need a lot of experience, but you know, we're gonna wanna see if we can build something so that we can find you an internship, of course. Uh, Steph is asking, Stephanie, I'm wondering if the program works with international students looking to intern in New York. Of course, we work with a lot of international students, a lot of F1 students um, for your CPT and your OPT. So 100 percent. And I, I was an international student myself back in the days. So I know that it's a hustle. It's very difficult to get internships in the U.S. because of the visa sponsorship. So all of our partners like are briefed by us. Obviously, we can guarantee visa sponsorship once you're done with your OPT, which is your one year post-graduation, but we can certainly help you, as I mentioned, for all of those. So yes, international students. Um, and if you are, sorry, because you asked another question, if you are an international student and you're already in the US, you are part of a local program. You don't need to pay the tuition for the overseas program. It's only if you were, for example, going in another country. So if you're already in the US, you're considered um, you know, you're considered for our local program. And of course we can help you as well with accommodation because we have great housing providers. Um, so what are the specifications in terms of time for internship for recent grads? So 
internships, you can do three to six months with us. Afterwards, we don't like to, to make it more than six months because afterwards we're hoping that you're getting a job out of it. Um, if you're going to do too long, like we don't want you to do 12 months as an intern, right? So three to six months, up to you. And that's based on your availability. Um, so you're asking Gabrielle as well, is there a graduation time limit to apply for spring of 2025? Um, no, not that I think so, but I think Gabrielle, same, same as Tess, can you email us so that I can understand better your case and then the team can advise? I think that would be, that would be better for me to, to kind of say. Awesome. Wow. Guys, we just, I just, I was like scrolling through to kind of continue on the questions, but I think that's all. So guys, I hope that this was helpful. I'm going to put again here, just a couple things. I'm going to put also our, 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 our IG. Okay. Our, Artbound initiative. Here it is. I hope that this was helpful. I love that, you know, you guys finished. You guys are the last one standing. So thank you for like staying on. Uh, it was such a great turnout. I hope that this was helpful. Uh, honestly, if you guys are here, you already are a step ahead of a lot of people that are not here. It means you're already kind of in that mindset of, of really seeking the information and connecting. So I think you're all in the right direction. And if we can help you and support you to make those things happen, we will, obviously. And if not, like, I hope that at least this was helpful for you to gain further info about how to get into the industry. Thank you so much for adding all your emails. I promise that I will not forget you. Give us a couple of days because it's going to be the weekend soon. So but at the latest on Monday, you'll have an email uh, with, the, with the recording. And then afterwards, I'll try to get also some of those answers um, that you didn't, that I didn't get to kind of do uh in the email okay thank you everybody thank you so much bye everyone i'll end now the recording thanks guys